Hey everyone, I was going to do a video about how I prep my SAT for planetary imaging, but the weather has just been awful. I know we tend to complain a lot about weather in astronomy and it's never as clear as we want it to be, but it's just been unbelievable this summer. It's August and I'm standing here in long sleeves and I haven't had a single decent imaging night since June. There wasn't that much to do in June. So while I have a clear spell here, um, I'm just going to show you how I do a full solar disk image like this one. I'm not a very serious solar imager, but I do like taking pictures of the full sun disk. So here's how I do it. First, I'm going to talk through the gear that I'm going to be using here. Um, I've got the 40 millimeter LUNT from the previous video and HEQ5 Pro for easier filming, but you can definitely use um, an alt azimuth mount for this as well. And for the camera, I have ZWO ASI 174 Mono. I used to always read that mono was so much better for solar imaging, but I didn't own a mono camera. So I thought, oh, I'll just make do with all of my um, color planetary cameras. And then I got mono and tried it. And the difference is absolutely astounding. So do your solar imaging in mono. I'm so glad I got this. It not only fits the whole sun disk in frame, but it's also really, really fast, which is a huge asset in the UK where seeing is rarely good. And the usual, I've got a laptop and I'll be using SharpCap Pro, which is my preferred uh, software for any sort of lunar, planetary, solar imaging and so on. So first I vaguely pointed the mount north, I put my telescope on and I chose one star alignment. Now because I'm controlling the mount with the Wi-Fi dongle with the SynScan app, I can choose the sun as the one star to align on, but I'm pretty sure that there's ways to do that on the handset as well. Either way, you just have to get yourself vaguely in the vicinity of the sun and then use this little soul searcher, solar finder scope to really center it. So I just told the mount to salute to the sun and then chose a lower speed to make smaller movements to center it. And now it will just track the sun well enough for imaging. When it comes to focus, there's a rough focus to do with the diagonal first and then fine focus to do with the helical focuser. What I do is I whack the exposure up so it's easier to see the edges of the disc. And then you have to slide the diagonal in and out slowly until the edges are relatively sharp. It feels a bit counterintuitive, like you shouldn't really be detaching the diagonal, but that is really how it goes. And the only thing I would make sure is that the helical focuser has enough travel on both ends so that when it comes to fine focus, you have enough space to go either direction. When doing fine focus, I put the exposure back down until I can see features like sunspots that I can use as a reference. And then I slide in and out of focus a few times just to give my eyes an idea of where the best middle point is. So just a few times back and forth and I'll get a much clearer picture of where the best point of focus is. And guess what? It has gone cloudy. <laughs> so I'll continue this another day. Right, let's try this again. So now that I've aligned and focused, I'm going to position the solar disk on my screen. There's a small tilting knob just underneath the front cell of the telescope, and this will let you adjust the so-called sweet spot. If you lower your exposure, you'll be able to see how it reveals more of the surface detail. And I want to make sure that that sweet spot covers as much of my solar disk on screen as possible and that I don't get any gradient. So I'm going to put the solar disk on the part of the screen where it's most evenly illuminated. It's slightly off center, but that doesn't matter because I'll be using region of interest anyway. So I'll just make sure that I'm using only that part of the sensor. If you find that when you choose a smaller region of interest that the disk is not centered and you don't want to move it from the spot that you like, what you can do is just drag the selection here in sharp cap to where you want it. And for tiny movements, you can click on these little arrows. And now I'll choose my settings. I keep my gain around 70% as usual, and I'm going to adjust the exposure so that the sun is a little bit dim on the screen, but you can still see all the surface details. And I'm going to grab around 10,000 frames just because I can, but you can absolutely get away with less, uh, especially if you live somewhere with better skies. And that's it for the imaging part. In this next section, I'll just show you how I process what I've just captured. 
I'll be using Autostacker, Registax, and GIMP, which are all free. And if you've been doing planetary, you're already familiar with all of these programs. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll start with opening my capture video in Autostackert. I've selected the planet option here, and I keep my nose robust number at six and local pretty much anyway. So now I will hit analyze to see the frame quality graph and what sort of percentage I'll be stacking. Right, this is the quality graph now. That looks um, unusually good. Uh, I want all of these frames here that have the highest quality and don't want too many. So I'll choose 25% to stack. And now I'll add my alignment points. I prefer to let Autostacker do that automatically. So I've deselected close to edge because I've had issues with that before, but you may not. And I've increased the size of my alignment points uh, so that I don't end up with too many. So I'm going to let Autostacker do the alignment points. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to let it stack. I've opened my stacked image in Registax now for just some sharpening. I'm using one of the smallest hydrogen alpha scopes there are really. Um, I think they only make 35 millimeters, which would be smaller. So I'm not going to get any crazy details. So I won't go crazy with the sharpening either. I'll pull the first slider a little bit forward and add a little bit of five and six. That's about it, really. I don't have any presets when it comes to Registax because every imaging session, the conditions are different, the seeing is different, um, the quality of stacked image overall is different. So I just go by what feels right at the moment. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm ready for the final processing in GIMP. Now in GIMP, I'm going to invert and then colorize the image. Inverted sun is not everybody's cup of tea, but I really like it because it gives me more of a sense of the shape of the object. It somehow makes it feel more round and 3D, if that makes any sense. There's lots of ways of doing this, and there are other even like designated programs for solar processing that will do it. But I'll just show you what I do. And um, you may have noticed that I like a simple and quick process. So I'm going to open curves and show you the curve that more or less gets me where I want. So I'm going to open curves. And I'll start by lowering the left, cor the right corner here all the way down, which gives me a completely black image, but that will change. So I'll pull it ever so slightly away from the left, just so nothing gets completely clipped. And then I will raise the curve almost vertically up here and then go all the way up. So this part here is what's going to reveal your prominences, if there are any. Um, you want to find a middle ground between clipping them and hiding them. So then I go up and then almost middle right. Um, this section here will control how much shading you get in the middle. I'm not a fan of too much contrast, um, but it does reveal the detail. So again, it's a game of balance. Season to taste, I guess. Once I'm happy with my inverted image, I'll use curves one more time to colorize it. I just go to curves and I select the red channel and just pull it away. Then I select blue and pull it away in the other direction. Um, you can choose how yellow or orange or peach or magenta you want your sun, and you can always correct these colors later in sliders. And then, as always, I'm just going to scale my image to 2048 pixels on the longest edge. And that's it. I hope this video gives you some ideas on um, creating your own workflow and doing your own solar disk imaging. I'm still adding and changing things, so it's not like this is a definitive process, um, but maybe it just gives somebody an idea on where to start. Um, I'm hoping that in autumn we're going to have some more clear skies, so I'm going to be able to do some videos on questions that I've had along the way. 
Um, until then, clear skies. <laughs>